Thank you guys for allowing me to be here. This has kind of been a real treat. Um, not only did Paul and I meet in eighth grade and go to um, youth, same youth group, we went to Bible camps together. He went off to school at Bible college for a couple a couple years while I stayed in town and went to the state school and then I followed him to Bible college and when he was there all he could talk about was this girl that he had met <laughs> and married and how excited he was he didn't have to go through that dating game anymore I remember him talking about that that he would found the one and so we used to be in classes together at Bible college and then, as often happens as you get older, you kind of, your lives kind of go separate directions. And uh, so this has been a real good to get together and spend some time together this week. Um, I'm going to warn some of you who are younger. I had perfect vision and then I hit about 42 years old and now I have to use readers. And the fonts on all my notes keep getting larger and larger and larger. So that is something you get to look forward to. I'm <laughs> excited for that. I do have lots of stories on Paul and Patty. Um, we just watched a video the other day of us doing a dance party with a bunch of college kids. And uh, we uh, will not show that video to you. I'm, I'm warning you that that is not something you would want to see, but yes. Um, we actually sang in a barbershop chorus in college too. And uh, sang with one of our instructors and some friends. Does this thing keep cutting out or is it me? Hold the top part. Hold up here? Okay, all right. Let me get into the message today, the name of Jesus. So I was thinking about what I wanted to share and this just kept coming back to me. And I think God has a message for all of us today about the name of Jesus, and I do have some notes you can follow along. Um, if you could have the power or superpower to do anything, what would it be? Maybe some of you it would be like, I don't know, walking through walls, uh, reading people's minds. That might be a little scary. Maybe you would like to play an instrument like a savant. You know those people? Have you seen those people that they just walk up to the instrument they've never seen and they just start playing it like they've been playing it for years? Wouldn't that be a cool superpower? Uh, maybe you would do something for others, like grant people their wishes. Maybe something like get a live, loved one to heaven, heaven or heal somebody that had a physical problem. Those would be great things, right? Or lots of things we might want to do if giving the opportunity and we had that. But as the old saying says, I think it's in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Um, there's power like no other that we can actually have access to. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's not for something self-seeking. It's not something that you can necessarily see. But it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, it's far above every rule, authority, and power. It's like the power that raises people from the dead. What is that power? It's the power of Jesus. I don't know. I was just thinking about that. If you just sat here and just said that name, Jesus. Jesus. There's something different about that name when you say it. The name of Jesus it's a power that's unparalleled in this universe, and yet is a, it is accessible to every single one of us. That's amazing to me. I heard a story recently that came from a, a prominent politician. Um, he said the morning of the biggest speech of his life, he was having trouble sleeping. He was tossing and turning for a lot of the night. He had about two and a half hours of restless sleep. He knew he needed more sleep because this, this big day was coming up the next day. And as you, have you ever been in those places where you just can't sleep? Your, your, your mind's racing a mile a minute. He tried everything he could. He was even counting sheep. I've never tried that before, but he was trying it. After more than 30 minutes of trying everything he could to get to sleep, he finally said these four words, Jesus, please help me. 
He said after that, he immediately fell asleep. He didn't remember anything until three hours later when he woke up. What happened? The name of Jesus. That's all I can use to explain it. So many people try to get through life and forget that there is power in the name of Jesus. There's something special about that specific name. It's power that can be prayed in, sung about, spoken out loud. It's the power of God for good, not evil. It's an authority that God has given to his followers to be used effectively for centuries. And so today I want to talk to you about the name of Jesus but before I get into his name specifically, what, what is in a name? What does a name represent? There's meaning in names. I have various nicknames that I have been given over my life. I was just telling Paul the other day, I have a, I have a cousin's, how do you do some of your a, a cousin's uh, married to this guy. And, uh, <laughs> okay, and... She, it's my mom's first cousin's cousin-in-law. What do you call that? Anyway, he, he just comes up to me and he goes, and I'd forgotten when I was a kid, he just made up a name. He says, your name is Shorty Jones. So he calls me Shorty. I have no idea what it means. I even asked him and he said, he doesn't even know why he calls me Shorty Jones. <laughs> Paul and I have some interesting nicknames for each other. You can ask us about those later. I won't tell you what they are, but, um, I had a lot of nicknames growing up. My dad made up nicknames. He called me Watosh and Tiwash. He just made it up on the spot. What, what's in a name, though? There is meaning in a name. Your name says something about who you are. Until about the year 1100, from what I uh, studied, there is, most people in Europe had only one name. So you would be just John or Sue or, or Anne or whatever it was. But then population began to increase and it became difficult to distinguish among people, so they added surnames. And this is where a lot of our last names came. They came from four primary sources, a man's occupation, such as John Cook or Miller, a location, such as John Overhill or Brooke, from their family, such as John's son, Johnson, and characteristics such as John Small or John Short or John Longfellow, those kind of things. <laughs> but just as they did back then, names actually still mean something today. Did you know that Shania Twain, the famous singer, how many of you heard of her? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, okay. She changed her name from, get this, does anybody here know her real name? Her name was Eileen Regina Edwards. She changed her name. How did she select that name? She wanted to honor her stepfather, who was of Native American, Native American descent. He came from the Ojibwa or Chippewa people. And Shania meant, I'm on my way in their language. So she became Shania Twain because she believed she was on her way. She wanted her name to mean something. There is meaning behind names. It also carries an identity. The name you have been given carries an identity. It often carries the identity of maybe your ancestors, your parents, perhaps, or your family line, but also so, sometimes something that your family, your family believes in you, like they call you joy or charity or something along that line. If you want a different identity than you were born with, what do you do? You change your name. So we're going to have a fun here for just a second. There are many people that have changed their name for various reasons. I'm going to give you some names, and I want you to try to help let me figure out who these famous people are. Let's start with Catherine Hudson. She's a singer. Does anybody know who Catherine Hudson is now? Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Somebody got it. Okay. How about Destiny Hope Cyrus? That is Miley Cyrus. She changed her name. How about Mark Sinclair? This one's a little tougher. He's an actor. Go ahead and show it. Vin Diesel. Which one sounds better to you? I think Vin Diesel kind of sounds kind of cool. How about John Stevens, singer? That just sounds pretty like kind of ordinary, right? John Legend. I'm going to go through a few more. Margaret Hyra. This is an actress. Anybody have any idea who Margaret Hyra was? Don't show it yet. Meg Ryan. Hmm? 
Mm. Olivia Cockburn. Olivia Wilde. Etta Van, let me see if I can get this. Etta Van Heemstra Hepburn Roostung. Audrey Hepburn. See, there's a, there's a Hepburn in there. <laughs> Eric Bishop. There's another one that changed her name completely. Anybody have an idea? Jamie Foxx. Now, some of you, if you ever run into these people in real life, just call them by their real names and see what they do, right? <laughs> Thomas M Mapother the Fourth. This is going to surprise you. Thomas Mapother the Fourth is Tom Cruise. <laughs> that sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Norma Jean Baker. Some of you might actually know this one. Marilyn Monroe. By the way, there is another one. Does anybody want to know what Reese Witherspoon's real name was? Norma Jean Witherspoon. Norma Jean Reese Witherspoon. Um, Reginald Kenneth Dwight. He's a singer? Elton John. You guys are going to go, you know, I, I learned about all these famous people today. You know? I got a few more. Marion Morrison. Some, a lot of people know this one. He's an actor. John Wayne. Now, how many of you think if you're watching a Western, John Wayne sounds a lot better than Marion Morrison? <laughs> Nicholas Coppola. Nicholas Cage. And one last one because he really messed his name up. Arnold Dorsey. It's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. You will remember this name. Engelbert Humperdinck. That way, nobody would forget his name. That's not what I would choose. Actually, one of, maybe one of the most famous people to change his names was a man born into a royal family in Minneapolis, Minnesota. He was given the name at birth Prince Rogers Nelson because his father wanted him to do, quote unquote, everything I wanted to do. Having not liked his given name much as a child, he wanted everyone to call him Skipper as he grew up. Eventually, as he grew up, he shed the nickname and became a famous musician, whereby he started going by his giving, given first name, so soon became known as, does anybody want to guess? Prince. Prince. Yeah, that was his given name, actually. After, some of you know the rest of the story, after going through various turmoil in his life, he began a series of years of changing his name, his identity. First, he changed his name to an unpronounceable love symbol. Then he became known as the artist, formerly known as Prince, then shorted to the artist, and eventually he came back to his given name, Prince. And as they say, the rest is history. It carried an identity. Now there is, uh, Jesus himself actually was given his name for a reason, if you didn't know that. In Matthew chapter 1, the angel instructed Joseph what to name his child. Mary will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus actually is a form of the Old Testament word Joseph. It means the Lord saves. It was not just a name, but it was his identity, his destiny, his purpose. A name carries identity. Also, a name carries authority. If you didn't know this, in the old days, a king would give his signet ring to a subordinate to carry out his orders. And so today, we actually use rings to identify being married or not or engaged. And so your, wife, your uh, daughter found that out. Um, it, it, uh, a, a signet ring was given to an edict or a written command to carry the authority of the king so they would seal that with a signet ring. That meant that by the authority of the king, his name, the instructions in the letter were to be carried out. We see that actually happen in ancient biblical story of Joseph in Egypt. Joseph became Pharaoh's right-hand man and was given his signet ring, it says, to carry out the orders of the king and also as if he was the king. That's how much authority he had. We also see in the book of Esther, King Xerxes sent out an edict 
stamped with, of all things, the same thing, his signet ring that carried his authority throughout the land. There's something about a name that carries a certain authority of the person whose name is it is attached to. Just wait until you get in trouble with your parents and they, that name comes out with authority, right? <laughs> it also carries with it, lastly, a reputation. The reputation of your name can be bad, it can be good, it can be a blessing, it can be a curse. In fact, in the Bible, Abraham, it says in Genesis, it says, God told Abraham, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. And he said, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. You see, there are several times in the Old Testament when somebody did something bad and it says they became a stench in the nostrils of the people around them. Their name was actually bad. Have you ever been around somebody you just didn't want to be around? <laughs> Have you ever been around somebody you just love to be around? You see, there's a reputation that comes with names. What, what reputation does your name carry? Is it a good reputation or is it not so good? That's a good thing to ask yourself. Now, those are, in general, what a name carries. Let's talk about the name of Jesus. What's in Jesus' name? Have you ever wondered why people in the world, when they get frustrated or angry, they say the name of Jesus in a condescending manner? We hear words like Jesus or Jesus Christ or God spoken as a cuss or a curse word. Why is that? Have you ever heard anybody get mad and say, Oh, Buddha or Muhammad or Hare Krishna or Allah, no way. At, at best, it's, it's it just flippant and they don't know what they're saying. Sometimes at worst, it's blasphemy. And yet people use the name of Jesus or the God of the Bible all over flippantly when they are angry. Why is that? Have you ever thought about that? I believe it's because there's something about that name. Even subconsciously, they don't even understand, but there's something about that name that's different than the others. Here's some things that are special about the name of Jesus. And we sang some of these this morning. There is power in the name of Jesus. In the book of Ephesians in the Bible, there's a prayer that talks about Jesus' power. It says, I pray that you will know God's incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. The power of God raised Jesus from the dead. There is power in that name. The power of Jesus even sets people free. Another verse in the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says this in the King James Version of the Bible. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That name, through God. Spiritual battles are won through God. Power over all that is in this world, including sin and Satan, is found through God. The song we sang earlier. There is power in the name of Jesus to do what? To break every chain. That idea isn't something we made up. It's actually something you read about in the Bible. It's something Jesus has. So there's power in the name of Jesus. There's also, just like the king's signet ring, there's also authority in the name of Jesus. Have you ever wondered why Christians end their prayers with, in Jesus' name, amen? Why do they do that? It's not merely a tradition, although it can get, be, get just like I do it because I always do it. Neither is it a magical formula to pray that you, whatever you want, you just say like Jesus, like you're saying abracadabra or something like that. And then God insti instantly answers our prayers. That's not why we do it. It's because there is actually authority in that name. Listen to what the Bible says about what it means to pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. John chapter 14. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask for anything in my name and I will do it. 
Why can you ask for anything in Jesus' name and see it answered? Because there is authority behind the name of Jesus. When you say Jesus, it isn't just like saying somebody else's name. As much as I love and appreciate your pastor, Paul, and his family, I don't think praying in the name of Durbin will get me anywhere. <laughs> I don't think it's going to do anything other than a chuckle or a weird look. <laughs> it's not that it's a bad or a weak name, right? I actually looked up the origin and asked him about it this morning. The Durban is apparently of Latin origin, and it means a city dweller or city herald. So praying in the name of a city herald from Boulder apparently doesn't invoke spiritual fear into anyone. <laughs> it doesn't cause anything supernatural to take place. But praying in the authority of the name of Jesus, that's a different story. Listen to what Jesus says. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. How does all of those things take place? In the name of Jesus. Hmm. In the name of Jesus, there's protection and so much more listed there. When you pray, do you pray with the authority of the name of Jesus? Do your words carry weight because of the authority that becomes, comes behind that name? There is authority in that name. There's also victory in that name. I like this. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What do we have victory over? Let me give you a couple things we have victory over. What that name has victory over. Jesus overcomes Satan. There's this guy, uh, this being that wants to wreck your life. He's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. His name is Satan. And while Jesus was on this earth, he cast out demons, and he overcame all the power of the enemy. And he promised us the same thing. Listen to this verse. This is a powerful verse. Jesus said to his followers, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome some of the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Did you notice I just read that wrong? How extensive was the victory? Was it over some of the power of the enemy? Or all of the power. Can some things harm us from Satan? Or do you say nothing could harm us? Jesus has overcome all that Satan can throw our way. Kind of reminds me of a story of a man named Smith Wigglesworth. Anybody here ever heard that name? Now how's that for a name? Wigglesworth. I think I might change my name if it was it. He's a man that uh, actually, when he was 40 years old, he was a plumber, and God called him into ministry. And later on in his life, he had some amazing things happen. And the story goes that Wigglesworth woke up in the middle of the night from a bad dream. And as he opened his eyes, he saw in the spiritual realm, and sitting at the end of his bed, he saw Satan himself right there. How many of you would be like, whoa? <laughs> you know what his reply was? He said, oh, it's just you. And he went back to sleep. <laughs> he wasn't afraid of him because Jesus had won the victory over Satan and he knew it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we run scared with a tail between our legs. When you are a child of God, you have victory. He not only gave us victory over Satan, but Jesus overcomes sin. And this is really, really important. This is probably the biggest and most important victory Jesus won. He overcame sin. You see, every single planet, every single person in the planet is born into sin. The Bible says that we all have fallen short of his standards and, and we cannot save ourselves. And some of you know this, we try. We try our best, but we fail. But the Bible tells us that Jesus took our sin on himself so that sin would be done away with in the lives of humans. All we have to do is to accept the offer that he gave us. It's simple. 
put our trust in him and follow him and we will have our sins completely wiped away. He paid the price for our sins if we will just accept his payment. That's why it says in Acts 2.38, listed right there, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It also says in Acts 4.12, salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to men by which you must be saved. No other name. There's only one name that can save us. We live in a world that says there's a lot of ways to do it. But Jesus says there's something about what I did for you. Hmm. Where is ultimate spiritual victory found? Through Jesus. That's why we sing songs like... Your name, your name is victory. Some of you might remember this song. How many of you have heard this song? Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. See, we sing songs because there's truth in that. Jesus' name is victory. One more thing about Jesus' name that's powerful. There is life and healing in the name of Jesus. John 20, verse 31 says, But these gospels are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, listen to this, you may have life in his name. How many of you would rather have life than death? Me? I'd rather have life. The name, the name of Jesus brings life and healing to all of humankind. It brings life to our bodies. It brings life to our souls. It brings life to our situations. It even brings eternal life. I don't know about you, but that's something to get excited about because there is no other name that can do that. Romans 8, 11 says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. There's an interesting story if you read through the Bible. Jesus' followers show how this life could affect a person. In Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, he's walking to prayer time at the temple, and he saw a lame man. That every day this lame man begs for money. And the lame man uh, was begging like he always did. But Peter sensed that God wanted to do something greater than give him money. So Peter looked at him and said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. Now listen to what changed this person. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of Nazareth walk. And the lame man began to walk, then leap, then praise God. This, wait, what? what? What just happened? Are you serious? This guy who can't move literally stands up and starts walking and leaping and jumping and running around. What happened? What made the difference? If you're not sure based on that scripture, it actually tells you later on in that story. It says, men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us if by, as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you all can see. What healed this man? The name of Jesus. Wow. There is power. There is authority in the name of Jesus, sure. But there is also life and healing in our bodies in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm glad for that in the world that we live in because our bodies are broken. Our bodies have difficulties. To know that there is life and healing in the name of Jesus is something that I pray for all the time. I think of all the advancements in medicine, we have sometimes lost sight of the healing that is found in Jesus' name. Do you need healing in your body today? We can pray in the name of Jesus, and Jesus can heal. That is ugh, unbelievable. We can pray in the name of Jesus, and he will still help, help people today, just like he did back then. In fact, listen to this story I came across. 
In this book, in a book, Ever Increasing Faith, that same guy, Smith Wigglesworth, the one with the weird, the one with the weird name, tells him about going to Wales. Uh, see if I can wiggle that a little bit. <laughs> he prayed for a man, and get it, his name is Lazarus. That's kind of ironic because there's a guy in the Bible that was raised from the dead named Lazarus. But um, Lazarus had been a leader in a church working in the mines days, and at night he would preach. And then eventually he broke down physically and he collapsed. And he got tuberculosis and it set into his body. And he lay bedridden and helpless for six years. Imagine that for a minute. God spoke to Wigglesworth when he was visiting the area and he told him to go raise up Lazarus. So Smith Wigglesworth walks into the room and Lazarus, this man, looked like a skeleton with skin stretched over it, is what he explained it. He wanted the man to release faith that believed that God could heal him. But this man was bitter. Others had, others had prayed for him. He thought God should have healed him. He thought he deserved to be healing, healed because he had given his life to God. And he worked days and preached nights. But Wigglesworth said to the people he, who he was staying with, he said, can we get seven people to pray with me for this man's deliverance? So he got seven volunteers and Wigglesworth, so there's eight total. They went into the room where Lazarus was laying on the verge of death. They circled the bed, they held hands, they put him in the, so one person held one of the guy's hands and one felt on the other, so they were in a big, cir big circle. And... Uh, Wigglesworth said, we are not going to pray. We're just going to use the name of Jesus. So they all knelt, and they just whispered the word, Jesus. 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 By the way, when you pray, you don't have to have big, long words. God knows your heart. He said, the power of God fell, and then it lifted five times. As they began to do that, it fell and it lifted. Have you ever felt the presence of God in a, in a, in a particular place? It's here this morning. The man in the bed was, didn't affect him one bit. The sixth time the power of God came down, it remained and it stayed longer. And Wigglesworth says to the man, the power of God is here. It is yours to accept. The man's lips began to move. And he finally made a confession. He said, I have been bitter in my heart, and I know I have grieved the Spirit of God. I am helpless. I cannot lift my hands, nor even lift a spoon to my mouth. So Wigglesworth said to him, repent, and God will hear you. He repented, and he cried out, O oh God, let this be to thy glory. And when he said that, the power of God hit him like he'd never had in his life. And Wigglesworth said, as we again said, Jesus... Jesus, Jesus, after this man had finally surrendered, he said the bed shook and the man shook. He said, I said, I said to the people who are with me, you can all go downstairs right away. This is all God. I'm not going to assist him. He says, I sat and watched that man get up and dress himself. We sang the doxology as he walked down the steps. I said to him, now tell what has happened. And it was soon found out in the area that Lazarus has been raised up and people came from all around to see him. And it brought salvation to many. What did it? It was simply the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Listen to these words if you need healing. We sang it earlier. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Because your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I want you to know today that the power, authority, victory, and healing can be found in the name of Jesus. Let me bring it down to where we live today. Let me tell you some things you can do with the name of Jesus today. 
Because it's enough to know it in your head, but you need to do something with it. So here's some things you can do with the name of Jesus. First of all, you can pray in the name of Jesus. John 16 right there says, In that day you will no longer ask me anything. He's talking to his disciples. I tell you the truth. My Father will get whatever you ask. How? In my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Pray in the name of Jesus. When you pray in that name, with all that it entails, the power, the authority, the victory in life, you get noticed. You get noticed by God. You get noticed by Satan. And God responds to those prayers in a powerful way. I love this verse. I quote it all the time. James chapter 5, verse 16. The prayer of a righteous man or woman is powerful and effective. Not because I'm powerful and effective, but because I am praying in the name of somebody who is powerful and effective. His name is Jesus. By the way, here's a little warning I feel like I'm supposed to share with you today. If you try and pray in the name of Jesus without being a child of God or close to him, it may backfire. See, it's not a formula. You can't make things happen. Just say, Jesus. In fact, in the beginning of the church, there were some charlatans that tried to invoke the name of Jesus for their own benefit, and it didn't turn out well. Some of you know the story. In Acts chapter 19, it says, Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. See, they saw that there was power in that name. They knew there was something powerful about it. And it says, seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. <laughs> One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, because he's a child of God. He's a follower of Jesus. He said, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. If you're not of Jesus, you cannot speak Jesus' name with power. The name of Jesus is so powerful, it cannot be thrown around like a magic word or manipulated to do what you want. There is power in the name, but only when used for godly purposes by godly people. The, pray, the prayers of righteous a man and woman of God are powerful and effective, not just anyone. Now, God can answer any prayer, but there's something about the name of Jesus in a child of God that is powerful. So I want to say to you, when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Not just an ending to a prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Because I've done that in my whole life. But understand, it's really that name that is the reason that your prayers are answered. Here's another thing to do in the name of Jesus. Meet in the name of Jesus. I have been to a lot of family reunions in my lifetime. I've, I've met with a lot of people for special holidays like the 4th of July or Christmas or Thanksgiving. And I enjoy being with friends like when I'm visiting here in Boulder, spend time together. But meeting in the name of Jesus with you guys and others like you whenever I can, there's something that takes it to another level, meeting in the name of Jesus. I don't know what... It, here's what I will tell you. In my experience, I can go where people who are a part of the family of God and meet in the name of Jesus and you feel like I've known you forever. There's something about that connection that God gives us. And God tells us that we should meet in the name of Jesus. Matthew 18, again, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my, by my Father in heaven. For when two or three come together, listen to this, in my name, there am I with them. There's something special about meeting, meeting in his name. Meeting together, power in agreement, power in fellowship, power in prayer. There is more than just a great talking, a great meeting together. There's something about meeting in the name of Jesus. That's why we do it. That's why it's important to do it regularly. Let me give you a, couple, a few more here. Honor the name of Jesus by how you live. Colossians 3.17. 
And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. 1 Peter 4.11, if anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ, and be, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. The way you live should honor the name of Jesus. You should give everything you can to him. 110%. Here's one of the most important. Bow to the name of Jesus. Mm. I heard a powerful statement recently. I'm going to just throw this out to you. Because it really challenged me. We want Jesus resident. He wants to be president. Sometimes we want God to be with us and help us in whatever we choose to do. But there's more to in that. Now I'm talking about President of the United States. I hope you understand that. He wants us to serve him each and every day. He wants to be in control of our lives. He wants the best thing for us and the way that we can have the best life possible is if not he is just with us, but he is also in control of our life. We want him resident, but he wants to be president. He wants to be in charge. And trust me, he is much better at being in charge of our lives than we are. Let's let him. Here's what I believe. If Jesus was president of each and every one of our lives, things would be better, much better for us. One last thing for what you can do with the name of Jesus. You can praise the name of Jesus. Hebrews 13 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, fruit of lips that confess his name. I got a list of songs here. Some of you might know them. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. We sing this one. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. We sing those that's praise. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. There's an old song that came out years ago. It says, Jesus, there's just something about that name. Here's how we're going to close today. I want you to listen to the words of this song, and then after that, we're going to give you a chance to pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus.